In this video, we're going to talk about symmetry. Um, we're going to talk about it not only in two dimensions, we're going to talk about it in three dimensions as well, okay? So what you want to know is a figure has symmetry, it's symmetrical. If there is a transformation, whether it's reflection or rotation or translation or whatever it might be, okay, such that the image and the pre-image lie on top of each other. So if I flip an object over and it lies on top of itself, then it has symmetry. Some examples might look like this, line symmetry. Okay, if I can draw a line somewhere where I fold over the image over that, so like a line here, and if I take the left side and fold it over to the right, it lies perfectly on top of itself. That means it has a line of symmetry. And a lot of these objects that you see on this page have a line of symmetry. For example, this one here, I could fold straight up and down the middle, right? That'd be a pretty simple one. So it has one line of symmetry. I can't draw one any other way that I can see. Like, this would not be symmetrical. So it just doesn't necessarily cut it in half, I guess, is what I'm trying to get a point across to you. Um, for the starfish here, I could draw a line of symmetry there. But you know what? Really, if I wanted to, couldn't I rotate this thing? And I could draw a line of symmetry here. All right? And fold it across itself. Whoops. Let's put that so you can see it. I could do one here. Boy, you know what? In fact, I bet you know how many there are going to be, right? There's five points. I bet there's five lines of symmetry. For the sake of time, I'm not going to draw the other two. So we have five, right? Identify how many. This one has one. This one has five. Over here, um, if I fold it straight up and down, that's not going to work. If I fold it over here, it's not going to work. Even if I fold it this way, is it going to work? Let's see here. What if I go corner to corner? You know, it kind of looks like it would, but let me show you something here, okay? If I drew from here to here to here, ready? See those three points, okay? And I'm looking at this shape right here. If I flip that thing over, I want you to notice that it doesn't lie on top of itself, does it? Okay? So that's not symmetrical. This actually has zero lines of symmetry. You're not going to be able to fold that at all. Then we have the square. Good old squares. This is the one you could probably expect to see on the ACT. Okay? Or I'm not on the ACT, but on the EOC. I could fold it here, fold it in half. I could fold it here and fold it in half. I could even go corner to corner and fold it to half that way, right? And I could go corner to corner, fold it in half this way. So it turns out that on these, there are four ways to fold it that'll make it symmetrical. So identifying the number of lines of symmetry, that's like the first basic skill that we have with these problems. After that, oh, this would be, okay, we gotta make a multiple choice. This might be what they do on the EOC. Which one does not, not have any lines of symmetry? Well, this one's easy. I could fold it right there, fold it in half, right? Okay, this one's easy. I could fold it in half right there, it folds on top of itself. This one is the one maybe we wanna get concerned about for the first time. The question is this, if I fold it here, maybe, does that lie on top of itself? And how are we going to check if it's the end of course exam and our grade is really depending on this? We're going to go through maybe if you need to, and you go here and here and here. There's the line that I want to do, right? Can I fold it across that? And so I'll go and I'll flip it over and I'll say, how about that? You know what? Those points lie exactly on top of it. So we do have a line of symmetry there. It leaves only one option. That's the one that you can't fold anyway. D is going to be the one that does not have any lines of symmetry. That's fantastic, but now let's talk about rotational symmetry, okay? Figure has rotational symmetry or radial symmetry. If it can be rotated about a point like this one here, between an angle, an angle between zero and 360 degrees, okay? So not 360, because that's just, you're right back to where you started if you rotate 360 degrees. Of course, it's gonna lie on top of itself. But at any point in time between 0 and 360, not including those, the image lies on top of itself, then it has rotational symmetry. We would say for the square, notice that every 90 degrees that I turn it, it's the same square, right? Rotate it 90 degrees. It's the same square. Rotate it 90 degrees. It's the same square. You can't tell if I've rotated it or not outside of the outside stuff like the text over here, right? So we say that the angle of rotational symmetry for this square is 90 degrees. Let's look at these, right? 
is this thing, can I rotate shape A? Yeah, I can. It has rotational symmetry. And so we would say, all right, look at this. Ready? Now I'm going to flip it 180 degrees. Sure looks like the same shape, doesn't it, right, that we started with. So we say that, yes, it has a rotational symmetry. And the, the degree of rotational symmetry would be 180 degrees. 180 degrees is how far I have to rotate it in order to get it back to where it looks like the same thing as, start, as what I started with. The M, if I rotate it, it doesn't look the same. It does not look like an M, again, unless I hit 360 degrees. So I say on this one, no rotational symmetry, because 360 degrees, every shape would have rotational symmetry if we included 360, right? For here, snowflake, you know what? It looks like... Boy, that looks the same, doesn't it? Boy, that looks the same, doesn't it, right? So it looks like every time that I come to a flat edge like this, it looks the same. Um, so what do we call that then? How many degrees? How can we figure that out? Well, here's what I know. There are six sides, right? So if I take 360 and divide it by six, it looks like every 60 degrees, every 60 degrees, we've started, we're, we're right back to where we started. Right? 60 degrees of rotation. In other words, we have 60 degrees here and here and here and here. Oh, no, that doesn't make any sense, right? 60 degrees at all of those locations. All right. That's rotational symmetry. One more type. We have plane symmetry. See, plane symmetry is like line symmetry, except we're talking three dimensions. Same thing, okay? If there is a plane that I can take and I can cut this figure in half, slice it right down the middle, and if those two planes light on top of each other, two completely reflected halves, then we have plane symmetry, okay? We also have symmetry about an axis, three-dimensional symmetry. So this is like rotational symmetry, but in three dimensions. If I can take this thing and I can rotate it, and it looks the same whenever I rotate it, so you can't tell that I'm rotating it, then that would be symmetry about an axis. This thing has rotation every single point. I mean, it, it always looks the same. So it would be tough to figure out the rotational one there. It would have plenty of them, right? So let's talk about, does this thing have plane symmetry, symmetry about an axis, or neither? Well, if I look at this, if I rotate it around, I'm going to be able to tell that I'm rotating, but I can cut it. If you can imagine slicing it right down the middle like this, so the, the blade would go right down here, right? It would cut through that dotted line or the solid line I'm drawing. The left and the right side would be exactly the same. So this one has plane symmetry. Check out that fancy handwriting, okay? This one here, if I cut it down the middle, it would have plane symmetry. If I rotate it around an axis that was in the middle, it would also have rotational symmetry. So this one actually has both. Over here, if I cut it right down the middle, like right here, Okay, and I took a plane or a knife and I went, yeah, you know, sliced it. That thing would have plane symmetry. But if I rotated it, I'd be able to tell that I was rotating it. So it's not symmetry about an axis. And then the last one here, this one may look like it's not symmetrical. But if I took and ready, see this right here? If my plane was like that, if I cut it where that was the bottom of the plane right there, okay, and it cut right up this line, right, and chopped it in half, both the left wing and the right wing of this heart shape looking thing would look symmetrical, right? Look at the base. See how the base is like a symmetrical heart, right? So that means that this thing actually has plain symmetry. That'd be a tough example to find, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, a lot of different types of symmetry. Really, you're just going to be asked you know, to identify what kinds of symmetry, what's the degree of rotation that you have to go to have rotational symmetry, some basic stuff like that. If that makes sense, then you've got everything you need for this entire unit, in fact, and we're ready to go do some uh, 